Okay, hello. This is a video, and it's a different kind of video, a little bit. It's a video on uh, a, a kind of finishing up a, a class that I didn't quite get finished. I had a wonderful class, and I'm sending this, I don't know if anybody's going to watch it, in uh, Amsterdam. Amsterdam Institute of Finance. It was a class on corporate modeling and LBO modeling and all that sort of thing. And uh, I'm going to make a video, and the video is going to, we're going to, I'm actually going to make three videos. One is going to be of the, uh, how we made a corporate model. And one of the things we didn't quite get finished is just finishing up a tornado diagram as I learned in Utrecht they had a tornado in 1640 something okay and we're gonna show you how this works but this is going to be all related to a corporate model so in just a three-day class we took this uh, first solar uh, uh, profit and loss statement balance sheet and went through all of a whole bunch of assumptions made some operating analysis went all the way down to a balance sheet that's just a little tiny part of the class and then we went and made evaluation now I gotta tell you about this class I'll tell you right now this was the most fa I'm gonna call this my April Fool's Day class these people were so wonderful on April Fool's Day after lunch I had some stupid little meeting and I couldn't eat lunch with them <sighs> and they came back and they purposely put a circular reference with the dreaded blue lines in the file and I went completely nuts for like 10 minutes so where's the circular where in the hell is the circular reference god damn there's a circular reference and uh, uh, uh they had just put that as an April Fool's joke. Can you, is that cool or what? So this is all the corporate model, and part of the corporate model was then getting valuations with different uh, terminal value approaches and kind of showing you the different issues with the terminal value approaches. We even put an audit sheet in, and we made a really flexible way to put all the assumptions together with different names. And then we had some historic, okay? So that's the part one. Now, I suppose what I'll do is if you press shift control, is that it? Yeah, I think you can do this. Just click on the sheets. I didn't tell you what I did. That's kind of horrible. How in the hell, how could you figure out what I did? Now, if you, well, I just marked the sheets by pressing control, shift control, page down with a function key or something. <laughs> now, if we move all of these, to a corporate model so I pressed there I didn't tell you what I did just now either I pressed alternate EM alt EM that allows you to do this copying stuff a little bit yeah I guess you can't uh, uh, can you define what the new book is can you, you can't can I make it I can't I can't uh, do it so I'll press OK so we're gonna I'm going to call this our, uh, this one is going to be our, uh, yeah, and we didn't, I didn't need the periodic, so alt E L, alt E L to delete the sheets. Okay, so that's going to be our corporate model, and we're going to go through, and this is going to be my second video, not my first one. The first one is going to be about the LBO, so I put this in some natural gas recovery consulting thing, but I'll put it uh, I'll put it on the website and all that stuff. So I'm going to call this first solar model. Now I have to call it model 2. I'm going to call it model AIF because we made it in the uh, AIF. I do damn tables. 
<sighs> I, there's a way to stop it redoing the tables. Now, I, I assume that I have the formula set to the, and the calculations to automatic, but notice it still recomputes the tables after that, okay? Now, uh, let's close that one. So let's try the second one. The second thing was we did, and that's here. Huh? This was the, actually, in a way, cooler. I don't know how I got rid of the control things just now. Oh, okay. And uh, that April Fool's thing was the coolest thing. I just can't get over it. Now, there are some things that just have a silly little, um, you know, we went through some theory on synergies, and I made some errors, and IRR and ROI, I've got to redo this, this PE ratio, and explain why the enterprise value EV to EBITDA ignores the life and the PE ratio doesn't. I'm going to try to explain that. I didn't do it successfully in the class. We're going to have to add a goal seat to this. And we're, I'm going to put all these kind of little bitty things in a, in a different one, but on this one I'm, I'm hitting the control key down. Whoops. Oh, shit. Shit. Come on. Periodic model. Okay, and then let's go. I didn't mean to go all the way. How'd you just go like a little bit? Ah, oh, shit. This is why I don't like to do the typing myself. Damn it. Period. Periodic model. I'm going to hold the control key. And then I'll make, oh, I, I got to push these little things. Okay, LBO model, transaction assumptions, revolver analysis. I don't know if this was an annual sheet. Uh, can I? Ah, oh, god damn it. Okay. Well, you know, screw it. I can't seem to do it. So what I'm going to do is switch the video off a little bit. For a second. So I got a little lazy just now, and I made it, I just deleted all the other sheets. And I call this an LBO model periodic. Now, one of the things we did first is this was a very simple, and maybe I'll do this, I'll put Alt I M. Um, Alt I M just makes a little a comment. Okay, and then I'll say this is a sheet that shows basic financing in a periodic model. Oh, come on, where you can change the time. Okay, now this little thing up here was the, if it was 12, uh, it was annual. And so this is the months in a period. Now, I think we should have pressed shift control C. I, if you've been following any of the videos, I changed the generic macro a little bit and I got comments on this uh, shift control R that it doesn't undo and I know it doesn't undo I'm working on shift control S and I'll put a shift control S that undoes that's not a verb I don't think that undoes that might be a verb that that takes away so this one we just have a balance sheet and we just showed you that whenever you do anything like this, if we have debt and cash, we have to go back to the balance sheet and we use this to show the circular reference. And I didn't finish the function in the circular reference, and I'm going to do that. Ah, <sighs> shit. I think I'll do that in a second video. I think I'm going to make a second video that has the, on this periodic uh, model.
that has the shows you how to create a function to eliminate the circular reference and don't do the disastrous horrible bullshit copy and paste macro okay and then we made an LBO model now the LBO model was also periodic but before we made the L LBO model I better go to this revolver analysis and in this revolver analysis I didn't really do, do, do everything kind of all the way because we put some different scenarios in here you know and I never even bothered uh, with a, uh, a drop-down box so if you want to make a drop-down box around our little cases and have a little bit lower um, uh, you know maybe done or something we can uh, go back to this one go back to this one and select our three and uh, use the index function or the code number to um, to do this and I repeated myself so much about this I'm a little bit embarrassed about it that you pick on a case now I think what we should also do is put a drop down box on the so in our low case we have no cash flow just a minute I'm going to explain the cash flow okay and in this case we put our this was our months in period in so this is a quarterly model because there was three months I think in a quarter and we used the EO month to get the end of the month we used a year function and then we used the round up to get a quarter function for some reason that was giving me a little bit of a headache okay and what we're going to do is kind of do a break-even analysis and see just how uh, um, uh, uh, what happens for example if you reduce the, the, the this um, uh, cost of goods sold or increase the cost of goods sold then we get negative cash flow so I want to see how low our cost of goods sold can go before our IRR on sub debt and our IRR on equity go down or up we're going to make a data table and at the end of the day we went in our LBO model oops it's not there this was I took the wrong one okay I've done this but that's okay we'll redo the IRRs and we're going to do a break even on the IRRs and see how low the IRRs in an LBO model can go with different kind of debt assumptions. And I think we need a, a summary page. LBO summary, okay? And we need to put things like we're, we're going to. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm kind of going back and forth a little bit but we're going to get the sources and uses of fund statement and we're going to see how much uh, uh, we pay for the company what's our exit which is an enormous issue what's our holding period all the kind of um, uh, basic assumptions and then we'll uh, have put a little sources and uses fun summary and then we'll have a little table that shows what a break-even IRR is now let me switch off the video because I don't want you to watch me type in all this crap so I'm gonna set up well I'll do that a little bit later I'm gonna set up a, a summary page okay now in the in this I'm gonna call this our, our standalone case instead of revolver analysis now Uh, so this is where you know you do all the key assumptions and those are the key ones I'm gonna put a spinner box on this cost of goods sold when I switch off the video and we had some seasonality and revenue now there are a couple of things that we did that 
we could have done, I could have done a lot better. On the revenue seasonality, no, 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 on the, where's the, this is on the, the accounts receivable days outstanding. Now, I was simplistic and just did it one day, but what if it's one and a half years? I, I mean quarters. What if we just put 60 days or 50 days or 40 days or 20 days? That's what we should have done. Okay? So we're going to fix that one. Okay? Um, and let me see. I think I'm just going to do it like this. That will make our graph a tiny bit bigger than shit. Okay, and then we'll push that up. Okay, so um, there we'll put the uh, A uh, percent of revenue of, of uh, quarter. So if we have, let's say we have uh, 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 50 days outstanding. Okay? That just screwed everything up. But that means we take that divided by 90 days in a quarter, and that's how many we should have done it like this, not the other way around. Okay? And that means that, uh, uh, let me see, uh, 56 percent of the revenues would be paid in this quarter, right? And the other 44 percent would be in the next quarter. Did I get that right or backwards? I might have got that right backwards. Okay, and then we'll put a um, days, don't worry, oh, I've got to do all this shit up down here then. And we're going to fix that days outstanding. Okay, and Finally, the, the, I made an error here. I did this really quickly, so this R&D expenditure shouldn't come from down here. It should come from a lookup table in this one. Okay, and the EBITDA, I don't know what this EBITDA is. This is still from an old one. That, that correctly comes from that. So we're going to fix the accounts receivable balance and I'm also going to add a profit and loss statement and a uh, tax. And the tax will become important because it's entirely possible two things can happen. Number one, we could have a tax loss carry forward if we have a tax loss carry forward, we have a deferred tax asset. And if the government isn't going to allow you to, to use that tax carry forward in a new company when you consolidate the tax returns, you've got to take and basically write off that asset. That's like a negative synergy. Now, uh, I don't know if you could get a nice wonderful tax lawyer to structure this somehow to keep that uh, tax carry forward if you have this set up as a separate corporation perhaps you could do that okay so let me um, I'm gonna switch off the video and I'm just gonna put a couple of these things in without you having to watch me type and screw up Excel now I had this backwards if there's one day outstanding of ARs. That means you get in 90 days, that means you get about shift control P. You get in the next quarter about 1.1% of the revenues are collected in the next quarter. I have to add another uh, line. And it's, it, it's theoretically possible to have the a, the subsequent, the, the in two quarters, AR percent in two quarters. And here's how. So it, let's say we have instead of uh, 90, let's say we have 90 days, then we get exactly 100. But let's say we have 120 days, then we'd have 
we try to collect more than 100% in the, the quarter, so we can't do that. So what we do is we can put a maximum of this or one. It's, you know, I, we, uh oh, circular reference? What? Oh, Jesus. This is like our, this is, oh no, I'm going crazy. Oh. And you could argue about that 90 days in the quarter. Please don't. Please don't criticize me for this. And especially after that class, now you, my, 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 and, and of course I put a dot instead of a, a, a what an idiot. I'm, I'm getting my dot commas and my, and I said you hardly ever use maximum, and I was right. We should have put minimum. Okay, and then for the balance, we take when you could get a. This would be a, a harder one to do, but let's just say it can't really get more than uh, two quarters ounce. No, we can do more. We can do more. So the next one you put uh, 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 this one divided by ninety minus this one. So that means we collect 33% in the next quarter, but of course if we uh, uh, press this as 1, hang on, why didn't that give me a negative number? Let's say it's uh, 92. This should have, this is I guess it worked. Okay, but what happens if we have three quarters? So let's do another one. This time, I don't even have to adjust the graph. Okay, and we could keep going. And I, I there's probably a bet. There might be, certainly be a better way to do this, but this is the way I've come up with. So let's say instead of what's one, ninety times two. Let's say it's 200 days outstanding. In that case, what you'd have to do is the same thing. You'd have to put another minimum uh, around this, or or uh, uh, yeah, this is going to be a minimum of this or one. <laughs> this is really bad. I uh, okay, and then on this one we put equals uh, this divided by ninety minus this minus that, and it seems to uh, it seems to work. So if we put uh, fifty days upstanding. It all the, then we've got uh, uh, this period, and I suppose we should put the the uh, AR collected this period even. Okay, so let's put AR collected this period. So if we really do this fancy with our kind of model. It, this would be, uh, this is, uh, uh, this divided by 90, that's how much we collect this time. So th this is uh, 90, uh, uh, 90 minus 50 divided by 90. All right. Okay, now. That's not going to quite work either, because what happens if we put 90 here? That that works. We collect nothing this period. We have to wait all for the next period. But if we put 95, well, it can't be negative, so we have to put a maximum of this number of zero. Okay? And I cannot believe this, because my friends in Amsterdam, a lot of them had dot commas, and I seem to be a little bit obsessed with the stupid with the dot comma problem. 
So if we put 100, let's put 220. Okay, and it still didn't work because uh, in this case we have 244. Just a minute, I'm going to start this. Okay, now I remember why I didn't do this in the class. I would have really got screwed up. But yeah, I have to put 90 here. You have to put a little 90 in the maximum statement, then 180, then 3 times 9 is 27, I think. So you put 270 minimum function, and then the final one captures it. So if we if we have, uh, uh, let's say, 210 outstanding, we still have it in 2 quarters. Let's put 270 outstanding. It all happens in 3 quarters. 280 outstanding. I just captured it. 250. 200, 180 is exactly equal to 170, and you can see uh, uh, 80, oh shit, see, we have an error, there's almost should be a little check on that, 70, I still have one thing here, uh, this has, this, uh, this one, the, well, I did the minimum calculation of 1. It's not really 1. It's 1 minus the, the last one. There's enough. Okay. Let's just make sure that didn't screw up anything else. Let's put 90. Let's put 120. And then it just shows you which is being collected in this quarter and the next quarter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the the working capital done and then switch off the video and I call this LBO working capital <laughs> God. and then we'll have another LBO one that just uh, uh, finishes off the taxes and everything else just a minute I've, I'm gonna set up the okay um, I'm gonna be brave now um, uh, don't worry about this reference it's not a circular reference so I'm not gonna get crazy like they got me in the class and they stuck a circular reference in there and, and uh, got me nuts now we'll put up here AR collections and, uh, and then now um, Please, if this was a monthly model, I hope you see that, okay, we could have done exactly the same with months, and then instead of 90, we'd divide by 30 or something, or I guess you could even get fancier and put 31 days and all that crap, but that, don't worry about that. And then we'll put month, uh, a quarter, quarter one, this quarter. Now when we do that, we what I did up here was I said, well, let's pretend we, we have a really problem. Our collections get worse. Well, let, let's make them get uh, better. And uh, how about, let's, no, let's, let's make them start out, how about 182? Just a tiny bit. And then they get 173. They get a little better. And then they get worse and then we got 180 and finally 100 we really start to improve you see how it moves the 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 uh, uh, percentages up and down okay that was all of these minimum and max and all you can do here is really look at the things now remember these are the years i suppose i'll I can put this up here for a year, and then we're going to use the lookup function. Oops, and then we press shift control R, okay, and nope, not shift control R, that was, that was shift right arrow and then control R. So in this quarter, we use lookup, okay, and as usual, we look up on the year, and then you go up and you find all of the years that was the rule and then remember we're lazy and we go to just click on the first one so we have nothing in the first quarter shift control p and then we have next quarter prior quarter this is prior quarter 
now I'm gonna I'm gonna just put a zero here. The reason I'm gonna put a zero here, shift control one maybe, and then a one, is because we're gonna use that in the offset function. So we're just gonna go back prior quarter. I don't know why the hell is it going like this, and then prior second quarter. I don't know how to say it, and then prior uh, third. Okay, so this is just two and three. So we're just going to look backwards here, and then we can put look up, go up to our, uh, um, you know, year, as usual, shift space bar on this one, and then we go to the next quote. Uh, equal look up. Maybe I should switch the uh, video off for this. But okay. This one, and then we, I just did this period, next next two quarters, and we only have one more. Okay, shift control P, and then we have look up, and then we uh, click on this one, and we go up. And hopefully that's the last one. And of course I did it wrong, because you have to first collect the years. And if you do it wrong there, just do it again. Don't get all worked up about it. It's still a good thing to do. Okay, and then shift control R, shift control S doesn't work. I already talked about this. And then for the collections, one, two, three extra collection. So we put less collections. I don't know what's happening in this period. And then we can put less collections next period, prior period, and prior two period, prior second, Okay, and prior third quarter. Of course you could make it as many as you want. Okay, and uh, now as soon as I'm going to finish this, I'm going to stop because I know how it is. So I still think we don't call it, we'll say here we're going to just throw all our revenues right into the balance and then we're going to take and put an offset function and we're going to see how many revenues we have in this quarter and I'm going to fill in our little uh, things here I think this this uh, and maybe I better make our a little wider, okay? Shift control one now. <sighs> I have a long if, if statement here. So in the current quarter, we put offset and we say we'll go up to the revenues. And this time, since we, uh, uh oh, uh oh, we'll just keep it on the same row because we already went up and then we press this for the column, you can press it up maybe again and then again and then maybe put a minus okay and then we are finished so, uh, no we're not and then we multiply that one by how much uh, percentage we get this quarter and I don't think we need any F4s at all on that one, because it comes from the same uh, line. And then I think we should also put a dollar sign here, because we're going to always look up in that revenue. So we can copy this down. Now, when you copy it down, up it worked. Okay. So let's see what happened. We get no collections and then we get 90 out of this 15 we collected 14 of it this period.
period and the rest of it in the next period. You see this? And then this, out of this uh, uh, 60, we collected 58. And then there's something wrong down here, it looks like. Isn't there? Oh. This is when I'm changing from period to period. I think I shouldn't have changed from period to period. I think I screwed that up. Um, just a minute. I'm going to switch the video off and fix that. So, well, let's just see this. If we would have uh, just made this days outstanding the same without changing it, we would have had really no issues. Okay, and we just keep uh, it just keeps lagging and collecting and lagging and connecting and we would have uh, gone up here and put uh, a days outstanding of just 70 which means we collect some in the first quarter then we would have gone to this one uh, collected some in this quarter some in next quarter if we would have put just one day outstanding, um, it would have it would have just collected almost all in the first quarter and just that little extra in the next quarter. Okay, so that's okay. We've got it when it's constant. Now I'm worried about when we change it around. Uh, I, it might have been okay, but I doubt it. Let me just look. Okay, I think we have to go crazy with the offset function. So what I did is, first I just put the days outstanding here so we can kind of see how they change. And we just have a couple of years right up uh, front. So let's make a kind of really crazy assumption. Let's say for the first one we have 250. We're really late with collecting. And then we really... <laughs> We start collecting immediately. We go crazy. And then we have, let's say, and then we realize we lose all our revenues because nobody likes us anymore. So we go back to somewhere in between. Okay? And how about then we'll go to two. How about then we, we'll, we'll start collecting a little more aggressively and we get down to 20. So we get all these different percentages on the I think sometimes really showing dramatically what happens can kind of give you the answer. So at first, okay, well, we go back and we collect it three months from now, three months from now. And then this 300, okay, we, uh, we're going to collect out of that 300 we're going to collect 100 in the first quarter. Okay, and that's okay. But we still have some collections left over from earlier. We have some collections left over from earlier quarters. So this is a pain. This is a pain. I got to stop again. Ah, shit. I'm just hoping I got it right. So here's the revenues. Now if you use the, I multiplied the offsets to go back to the revenues. And then I also use an offset on this one. So we, uh, in this case it's zero. We just multiply it by this one. But this one, we go back to revenues. And we go back to see how much we were collecting for those revenues two periods ago. And this one would be three periods ago, and this one would be four. So this is that 78% of the uh, 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 75 up there. And then we, it's the 78%, I'm sorry, of the uh, uh, 60, and then 78% of the 90, and then so on and so forth. And then we don't have anything here because we collected them faster. And then I collected them more slowly again. So it's just using the offset function twice, something I've never done in my life. 
but I believe that that's the solution. Now, I would never in a million years remember how to do this next time. Never. So the idea of these videos and these files is that you can open them up and look at them and try to remember where they were. Okay, this will be the LBO periodic model. I think I'm also going to rename this uh, uh, quarterly um, working capital. And I'm going to uh, uh, put that on the disk and I'm going to put that on the file. And that is really pissing me off. I hate Excel sometimes, the fucking thing. Okay. That really pisses me off after doing all of that and then it breaks. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And I didn't do anything fancy. 